Whatever you're celebrating, I am very pleased that you're here. Grab a cup of tea or coffee or water, wherever you are, and let's get into the video. Just a quick thank you to Squarespace for always supporting my content, but we'll chat about them a little bit later on. So usually every year I'll do a Christmas gift guide or a festive gift guide, but this year I decided to just focus on a DIY holiday gift guide because that's what's most important to me this year. Something that's created with love and memories and something that I know that these people want. There's one very special gift that I created this year that I designed that I'm gonna share with you as well. I'm a huge foodie, so a lot of these gifts are gonna be food related, except for, a, well, a couple. But that means that I'm gonna link a lot of videos that I personally have found very helpful whilst also trying to come up with other ideas for personal gifts that I'm gonna create in the description below. The first one is to thrift some beautiful jars and to upcycle them into a way that makes them, either you can decorate them very beautifully or this is where the food comes in. You can create something like a soup mix for someone or a brownie mix or, you know, try and create something more luxurious for than those sort of box cake mixes that you can get. I have been bought these before in the past that have been actually purchased from a shop and they were so helpful and they were lovely. And I think if you make them yourself then you can really tailor it to what you know that that person's tastes are. For example, I love brownies, but I love blondies even more. So someone who knew me could create a blondie mix and put white chocolate chips in there and make sure that everything's vegan and make sure everything is to my taste. I personally love these kinds of things, especially if you have a zero waste shop near you, you can buy individual things, or it's actually a great way to save money if you wanna create multiple ones of these and buy in bulk. Obviously, if you can't get things unpackaged, don't worry. If you make multiple ones of them and you could even make ones for yourself, this could be a really great way to save money and create something special. Whenever I go to thrift stores or charity shops, I always find beautiful jars that just need to be used, need to be decorated. And glass is a really easy material to paint onto as well if you want to create some snowflakes or something just to make it a little bit more festive. The second one is to make something really luxurious and fancy in terms of edibles and consumables. I mentioned last year that my mom and I made biscotti because they seem kind of fancy and a little labor intensive. They're actually not that difficult, but baking something or making something food wise that has that luxury feel when you buy it could be a really great option as well. Something like chocolate truffles or homemade chutneys and jams and things from your garden or from a local farmer's market or something like macarons, which are just divine. Another thing on the same vein is thinking about, for example, near me, there's a brewery called Harvey's Brewery and they make amazing, amazing beer. You could even go and fill up one of their, I think it's called a grommet, I think, or a big bottle and give gift one of those. Yes, it's not necessarily DIY, but you are thinking about their preferences and what they may like. And you could put that even in some form of hamper. The same goes for wine. There are places near me where you can refill wine. But if you live in a region where you are living near areas where they produce wine, then you're much more likely to be able to find somewhere that you can refill it. And again, reusing beautiful bottles or buying bottles there and filling them up and creating a kind of hamper gives it a really nice local feel to your gift. I also think that this is really great if you have family or friends that are from different countries because you're giving them a little piece of your culture and what you enjoy and hopefully what they will enjoy too. For example, my fiance's family are American, so they may never have had some specific British biscuits that are just heavenly. So maybe, or something else European that I could make for them for them to try. Now the third one, I mentioned last year that what you could do is restore old photographs for family if you have old photo albums with beautiful photos but are slightly worn out. A similar thing this year that I've done that is, I guess, slightly different. My fiance and I have been together for almost eight years now and I was really into photography almost the entire time that we've been together. So this year I wanted to design something that really signified the last seven, eight years of our lives because we're just about to enter a whole 
new stage where we're no longer just boyfriend and girlfriend, but we're getting married, we're moving to live together. But I didn't ever want to forget that special seven years of our, the beginning of our relationship. So I spent about five to six hours designing this photo book that's going to be printed as an actual book. Now, I didn't necessarily make the the book physically but I designed it and I spent a long time learning how to use InDesign and then actually creating the template that I wanted and having different photographs from different trips that we'd been on. The way I laid it out was thinking about getting all the photographs from very specific trips or times in our lives or places that we have spent a lot of time and go through them that way and I tend to have a couple of photos that take up a whole page and then one if it's a particularly beautiful landscape that takes up both pages and then towards the end I wanted to include a lot of those phone photographs that we take but that don't really make it anywhere that just are kind of for for him and I so I created a template for those couple of pages that had about that had about three or four phone photos per row and had two rows per page just so that you can have that extra memories at the end throughout the past however many years and I want to create this for every seven years I guess that we're together because I personally love having something that I can hold and flip through it feels so nostalgic and just makes me so happy to look back on memories that I think that I had forgotten. I even had a whole section which was just film photos that I had taken around 2015 I think or 2014. Gosh. And as someone who takes a lot of photographs and I'm sure you do too especially if you take a lot of phone photos they just sit on your phone or they sit on your hard drive or your computer and they never get seen so you could go the route that I went and design an actual book that will be printed and sent, or you could create your own, you could print the photos off and create a little book yourself, even create a scrapbook that has other things like cinema tickets and receipts from special moments and really lovely things like that. I can't wait to give this book. I think it's gonna be really, really special. The next one, which is on a similar vein, if you are a foodie like I am and my partner is, we love to collate recipes. And I kind of hinted at this before that my boyfriend quite likes to create recipe lists on like a Google Doc or something. But what you could do is, especially if you have a family member, like a parent that you love to make food with or a grandparent, for example, if you could scan in any handwritten recipes that they had and create a sort of scrapbook type book of recipes for your family. Or I've had it before where a grandparent has passed away and I've taken all the recipes that they created and made it into a book and then gifted it to one of my parents because that's a nice memory for them as well. I think recipes is a really lovely way of connecting with people and cooking with people. And you could also print out the photos of that recipe and different things, or even photos of you two or you and whoever cooking together. The next one I definitely talked about before or earlier in this video is a DIY hamper. There are loads of antique and vintage shops in Brighton and in Lewis, the towns that are near me right now. And they have loads of gift baskets that are just really old, like they're second hand and you can get them for five pounds, 10 pounds, and I'm sure you can get them anywhere. Or you could just reuse a, a box or something and paint the box, just make it a little bit prettier. And then put things in that you are a big fan of, like for example, some local wine or some local beer, and you could make some homemade granola, homemade brownies, any of these mixes. And then that's a nice, way to also include any other little things that you know that they would like. For example, when my nephew was born, his grandma, my brother's wife's mum, she hand knitted him four cardigans. They were so cute. Oh my gosh. And that is just a beautiful gift. If you are good at knitting or crocheting or macrame, these are great things to include especially for younger kids who probably just need some nice things to wear rather than loads and loads of toys. <laughs> if like me you have a green thumb but you also have loads of friends who love plants 
propagating some plants that you already have or you've grown before and letting them root and then replanting them into a nice little pot and gifting those is quite a lovely gift. It's free if you have a pot lying around and you already have a plant that you can just simply propagate or what you could do is propagate and then go to a thrift store or a secondhand store and get yourself a pot and of course you can personalize it in any way that you want. You can paint it, you could add some kind of carving into it. I don't know what you can do these days, but I love those things. There's, I can't remember what plant it's called. Pothos? I can't remember. But that propagates so easily. And I've just snipped and snapped and propagated those and put them all over the house so that my mum can have some in her bathroom, we can have some in the kitchen, we can have some in wherever. The next one is something I've actually started doing recently is thrifting vases. If you have people in your house that like to have flowers or you have flowers from the garden or anything like that and actually repainting them so that they fit the aesthetic of your house. There are loads of really beautifully created vases in thrift stores that I see but I think either they're a really ugly colour or they're just plain see-through glass or they've got some kind of print on them that I don't really like but repainting them in something like terracotta or a similar colour that just goes with the overall look of your room or the person that you're gifting it to can be a really nice way to add a home decor piece to that person especially if you know that they like decor and things like that you can make sure that it fits the aesthetic of their house and the colour of their house. If you have any friends who are looking to be more sustainable, you could create zero waste, sustainable oriented DIY hamper, much like the food one I mentioned earlier. Except with this one, you could hand sew some bags for them to help them buy in bulk. You can also thrift some jars. There are always jars at any thrift store I ever go to. You could pick some, you know, quite pretty ones. You could have ones that help them to go and buy stuff, just stuff to hold in their cupboards and things at home. And then if you have anything else that you could think of in terms of helping them to be more sustainable that you could make yourself, that's just a really great way to adding in to a hamper. Especially if you have a canvas bag that you don't necessarily use anymore, you can make it personalized by embroidering in a pattern or just your name and their name together or like good luck on your sustainable journey. Something like that could be really cute. I'm a huge fan of buying experiences for people. So the last thing that I would suggest in terms of what I have done before and could actually do is sometimes I will design a really beautiful voucher so that you actually have something to give them on the actual day, if it's a birthday or a festive holiday, and buying them an experience instead and writing on it, you know, what the experience is and when they can go and redeem that. I've mentioned before that for my nephew's birthday, we took him to this huge adventure soft play thing. Obviously I didn't need to get him a voucher, we just took him, but he's two. <laughs> so if it's for a family member or something or a friend, creating a voucher of saying, you know, a special meal out for two at this place at this time or whatever, or some kind of other experience. It's a great way to make something that's quite personalized, but also gifting them something that doesn't necessarily have to be materialistic. Before this video gets too long, I'm gonna leave it there, but I would love to know any of your ideas and your plans for DIYing a gift this year. And of course, in the description, there will be some other videos that have way more ideas for, especially if you're very crafty. I'm not that crafty, which is why I've stuck to simple things that I know that I can do. So yeah, if you're interested, I'll leave those in the link below. I just wanna say thank you so much to Squarespace for sponsoring today's video. Squarespace gives people a powerful and beautiful online platform from which to create your website. You can connect with your audience and generate revenue through gated members-only content, manage your members and send email communications and leverage audience insights. I love creating a community over on Squarespace because I can use their fully integrated commenting system that supports threaded comments, replies and likes. So if you're interested, head to squarespace.com for a free trial and when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com forward slash sustainably vegan to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. But if you did like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe and I will see you in the next video. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.